All right, thank you for the introduction, Zach, and Emmanuel, can't forget him. Um, so, yeah, during the pandemic, I began using social media a lot. I was really active on TikTok especially, and one of the trends I most often saw was one where people would try to predict different personality types or the way that people would act at their high school. And at the time, I didn't think too much of it, but when I ended up returning to high school post-pandemic, I realized just how accurate some of those depictions really were. The stereotypical Visco girls and Edgars really did exist, and everyone wore the same flannels and beat up Air Force Ones. Zach, did you get those from my room? Bro, you don't have to call me out like that, bro. What did I do to you? Zach, it's actually not cool. But yeah, whether you like it or not, all of us who've been exposed to social media trends, that our perceptions or tastes are fundamentally altered. Although this may seem natural, a lot of us don't completely understand how these social media trends are driven and engineered. It's important to understand that and important to understand how it affects us. So let's take a look at social media theory. Um, social media theory is presented by postmodern philosopher Jean Baudrillard. Baudrillard argued that as media progressed, um, it went through four stages. It's the reflection of a profound reality. It masks and denatures a profound reality. It masks the absence of a profound reality. And it has no relation to reality whatsoever. Dr. James Morris said in his research examining social media theory that the overall social media conversation isn't directed so much as trying to uncover the way the world is, but trying to uncover the way the world is as we want to see it, or as it's most entertaining to us. If you'll ever think about like influencers going to different countries and posting about their trips, they're never posting about the underdeveloped parts of these countries or who all is struggling. They're posting about the hotels that they're in and stuff like that. So the goals that comprise this motivational cluster to entertain, please, or upset others are all focused on eliciting emotional responses. We've seen this progression as social media has grown. Trending topics and influencers who introduce these trending topics seem to depart further and further from reality as we know. Even the controversy we see online is engineered and may not be true. Media manipulation is very real and not just limited to the services you think of when you say the words social media, like TikTok and Instagram. Ryan Holiday is a media manipulator who wrote a book called Trust Me Online, where he talks about how he manipulated the media to serve people who pay him, or corporations, or individuals. And he talks about how the more unbelievable or extreme a headline is, the more people see it. And the more people see it and spend processing the unbelievable claims that he's making, the more likely they are to be real. We see this occurring in a lot of like, the media we see right now. And it can have a real big toll on politics as we know. So how many of us read articles and blogs to get our news? I know I for sure do. Many consume news content from these articles and blogs, and this changes the way we perceive ongoing events. Being able to manipulate what is otherwise considered a reliable form of media is media manipulation at its finest. It's reality control. He writes that the, he analyzes how certain emotions can be invoked uh, on purpose and how they can be taken advantage of. Hopelessness, despair, these drive us to do nothing. Pity and empathy, these drive us to do something. They like get up for computers to act or donate. Anger, fear, excitement, or laughter, these drive us to spread. These drive us to share the media that we're exposed to to other people. But in reality, we're not contributing to a meaningful conversation. It's probably just a superficial and meaningless trend that we're contributing to. I hope you guys are catching on to an overarching theme here. And good engagement is the bottom line regardless of how it affects us or the quality of the content. We see this happening on social media where more trends, more creators just stick to what's popular or trending to garner engagement for profit, not to impact this in any meaningful way. It's the subscription to this content that drives collectivism and loss of identity. If everyone is exposed to the same trending, meaningless content, we're all driven to contribute to it, and we derive our personal choices in our day-to-day -day life based off of this. Like the people like Visco goes and Edgars, as I was talking about earlier. How we dress, the fashion choices we make, the personality choices we make, and how we act around others. 
Even if creators and the general industry were to have a startling revelation as to how they could fix this and to start producing meaningful content, it would amount to nothing because of censorship. Let me introduce you guys to the theory of the Panopticon prison. This is a theory postulated by Jeremy Bentham, an English philosopher. He talks about how in a theoretical prison, imagine there is a watchtower in the middle of this circular prison. The watchtower has blacked out windows, so the prisoners can't see what's going on inside the watchtower. But the guards inside the watchtower can still see the prisoners. The prisoners don't know if there's anyone in this watchtower at all, if there's anyone watching them. But the mere idea that there could be someone inside this watchtower observing them is enough for them to police themselves. A lot of us have consumed content or at least seen on TV or Twitter about how we're being surveilled or how data on us is being collected. But even if we were to dismiss these ideas and say they're not true, subconsciously this still affects the amount of like the content that we put out. It's a form of self-censorship. Screw self-censorship, let's talk about actual censorship. All of the social media that we post on has the power to take down or prevent us from posting certain topics or things. Even if we were to start posting things, the algorithm that these, that runs these social media, like TikTok, chooses what content to promote. They choose what should be trending and what shouldn't be trending. The bottom line is that you can't trust what you see online. The content that is trending and regularly hits our feed only does so because it's trying to elicit some kind of emotional response and doesn't meaningfully contribute to our lives. Even the content uploaded attempts to provide like, substance, it's censored. We see this occurring right now. For those of you who are seniors, we're applying to college right now. Just a few weeks ago, we had a seminar where our academic counselor told us to identify a few words that distinguished us from the rest of our peers. And a lot of us struggled to do that. We couldn't even find one or two words that made us unique, even amongst this small cohort of the TAMS population. I'm just gonna let that sit for a little bit. <laughs> just the fact that we can't do that is a function of the content that we consume. How much college content is out there? How many colleges are posting about their campus and academics? When in reality, it is a departure from, from what reality as we know it. A lot of the statistics, they're inflated. And colleges just want to generate engagement. They just want us to apply to their college, regardless if we actually have a chance of getting in, so that they get more money from the process overall. This is something to consider the next time you look at something that's on your feed or another trend that you see on any number of social media. Thank you.